Hi, it's Anne here, and today's video is my 11th update for my Pan That Palette project and Palette Roulette project for 2022. So this is the final update before we do the finale, which will be at the end of this month, and I will kind of do a recap of everything. But for now, we're just going to focus on the update from last month for the Pan That Palettes, the November picks that I just uh, worked through, and then we'll introduce the December picks. The palette that I am working on to pan, which pan, <laughs> it's pretty slow going, uh, is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. This palette is a really tough palette to pan, just put it out there. Uh, but I did hit new pan this morning. Uh, I thought this was going to be a failure of an update, but we finally hit pan on this guy, which I have been working on for I think like what, six months now? Um, lately I've been mixing this shade with this shade, sorry I'm out of focus, to sort of neutralize it a little bit because this one is pretty warm. The shade name there is Salted Caramel. Uh, so really happy that I hit pan on that and I'm definitely like expanding the pan on Marzipan. Marzipan will not be finished by the end of the year. I thought for sure it would be, but just the way things have worked, it's definitely not going to be finished by the end of the year. I've made an executive decision that I'm not ready to let this palette go, and I don't want to disassemble it. I think what I'll end up doing the, with this palette, I'm going to keep it, but I kind of want to keep it like eventually this will kind of go into the like makeup I might keep it for a while as like the makeup collection kind of thing because this was like my first big girl palette. <laughs> um, so I do have sentimental feelings towards this um, and like I'm enjoying it and I'm kind of looking at it and being like, I can get so much more use out of this still. It's still a good palette. I, I'm enjoying playing with it and yeah, I just, I want to keep using it. Um, again, I probably, I'm not going to use it as my project pan for next year, but I'm not ready, ready to fully let it go yet. I know, disappointing. I know I need to like learn to let things go, but this isn't one of those things. Um, I'm not weighing this palette because it's too heavy, but I will weigh it at the very next update because I've been, I weighed it at the beginning, I weighed it at six months, and then I'll weigh it again. Um, it's a little too heavy for my jewelry scale, so I only get like full gram change on this, which I'm pretty sure we'll see a change in the next update. I will throw up the side-by-side -side picture so you can see the change from last month to this month, and yeah, let's move on to the face palette. So the face palette that I'm working on, I have to read it from the back every time. It's the Hourglass Ambient Light Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 4. So this came in 28 came out in 2018. And no new pan on this guy. I feel like the pan and this shade on the end is expanded a little bit. Um, this one is like super close to pan. It'll get there eventually. Um, but not there yet. I have been using the highlight and the bronzer as well. The bronzer's pretty flat. Actually, the bronzer's probably closest next to pan and then the highlight. Um, I didn't think I'd be here <laughs> this time of the year. I definitely thought there'd be more progress on this, but I'm also not mad because I like this palette. Um, I'm not in a rush to finish it, um, but it would have been nice to see more progress on this palette. So again, I'll put the side by side up so you can see um, if there's any different I, difference, I haven't taken the photos yet, so I really don't know. I am weighing this palette. So last month, this palette was 135 grams. It's now 134.7 grams. So it's a difference of 0 0.3 grams. Okay, I've scooched over a little bit because now we're going to go through the November palettes. And I'm just going to talk about the palettes in sort of a random order. The first one I'm going to talk about is what's on my eyes today. I've mixed this palette, the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde. Always have to be very careful in pronouncing that. I, Mercury is a hard word for me <laughs> for some reason. Um, I mixed this with the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette to create today's look, plus one other shade called Chamomile from Cleona. So it's a bit of a blend of shades. Uh, but from this palette, I focused on sort of these two shades over here on the end, the green kind of shades. Um, and I'll just go through the looks fairly quickly with this palette because I did use this one a lot. I like this palette, but it's pretty intense. Some of the like shimmers and stuff are pretty intense and I feel like they can get kind of messy. I mean, you'll see in the looks. Um, so this first look is more of like a purple look. I'm focusing on sort of the purpley shade over here. Again, I kind of just picked one shade to really focus on. Um, and then I'm pretty sure I used 
like vortex and this purple shade here. I might have used a bit of a brown as well to deepen like the crease a bit. The next look is a bit, a, bit, a bit of a soft pink look. I did this look a couple of times actually. I focused kind of like on these two pink shades over here. I think I maybe put a little bit of this shade on or potentially Galaxy. I'm not 100% sure, but definitely like focused on the light pink shades. Um, I am drawn to those shades in this palette and it's an easy look for me. You'll see that theme comes <laughs> up with a lot of the other palettes this, this month. It's going to be kind of boring um, in terms of looks because of that. Uh, but I like what I like and I, I feel like I like pinks. Um, this one was a look where I focused on this particular shade, which is called Nebula. And it kind of looks a bit blue in the thing, but when you put it on, it's more purple. I think it's just based on the colors next to it. It pulls blue. Um, really enjoy this color. Again, it can get a bit all over the place. Like again, I have really deep set eyes, so I felt like the glitter moved quite a bit. I think with this palette, it might be best to use like a glitter glue with it if you really want the color to stay exactly <laughs> where you've put it. Um, most of my looks ended up sort of getting blown out a little bit and throughout the day, the glitter sort of like migrated a little bit, um, which is not bad, but it did kind of look a bit messy. And this last palette was sort of like a neutral. So I focused on, the first shade that I really focused on was this one called Gold Glitch which is like a gold color, but it's got like green uh, glitters in it. So it's really, really pretty. It doesn't really show up in the photo very well. Um, but like when you put it on your eye and you sort of move, you can kind of see the little like green reflex in there, which is really, really pretty. Um, and I think I probably used Crash. And then I'm pretty sure I used a dark brown from the Too Faced Chalk Bar palette to sort of deepen the outer corner with this particular look. Um, so I really enjoyed the, the kind of variety. Like I could go for like a neutral brown look. I could go for a pink look. I could go for like a blue purpley look. Like this palette offers a lot of variety as long as you can pair it with something like a Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette or something with some neutral browns. Because that's the only thing that's sort of missing from this is sort of deeper neutral browns. That's the only thing you don't really have. Um, and a lot of these shades we've I've talked about, like these two shades are brown. They look brown right here. But they're pink. <laughs> like everything has a pink tinge to it. Um, even if you think it's brown, it still comes out a little bit pink. That's the Huda effect. So yeah, I really enjoyed playing with this palette. I think this is the one that I got the most use out of over this past month. Next up, I'll talk about this little guy. This is like almost the opposite. It's not very versatile at all. This is the Violet Boss Creme Brulee palette. This is something I got as an add-on. I think it was with Ipsy, so I didn't pay for this. It was like a bonus thing. I don't think I would go and purchase this particular palette. The quality of this palette is good. I like the size of the palette, the number of shades you get. It's just, it's very, very mid-tone and very warm. So for me, it's maybe not the best palette. So you can see like the first look, it's pretty orangey, um, which I know some people really like, but it's not really my thing. Um, I also have another look where I tried to get a, a bit more of a neutral look. I think I might have used a bit of... A champagne color from something else. It might have been uh, from the Huda palette. I feel like I used a lighter champagne or maybe I mixed, I think I maybe mixed these two to kind of lighten this color up. But again, this is sort of the most neutral of a look that I could get out of this particular palette. Otherwise, everything is like burnt orange looking, which is fine. It's just maybe not my thing, but quality wise, this is a really good palette. So I, I like this palette. I would love to see a palette like this. I know most of these are like very thematic. Like she has one that's like bright colors. There's one that's like purples. If there could be one like this, that's like an everyday, like mid-tone browns, maybe a couple cool shades, maybe a cool pink in there. I would be happy. Like if you could make this into like a mini ABH, what is it? Sultry? That would be awesome. Uh, that that would sell like hotcakes for me anyway. <laughs> um, but it's a nice little palette, just maybe not something I love, but I like. Next up is the Charlotte Tilbury Quad in Pillow Talk. I only have one photo of this. I tried doing a photo where I took a picture of the look without this sort of topper shade, and then I took a I added the topper shade. You can't see the difference. I can't see the difference. <laughs> There's no difference. That topper shade is very subtle. You can a little bit in person, but I feel like it's super, super subtle. And I'm just putting this out there. This is not worth the money. This is a nice palette, not worth the money. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend any of them. I have two Charlotte Tilbury quads now. 
And unless you get this gifted to you or you get it 50% off or more, <laughs> get it if you want it, but I wouldn't recommend these quads. I just don't think they're worth it. This is a nice color story for me, but it's like a one noter. Like you're really not getting any variety out of this at all, which again, that's expected for a quad. Um, but yeah, it's nice. The colors blend really nicely. It looks very flattering. If you don't wear a lot of eyeshadow and prefer like a one and done kind, I don't wanna say it's one and done because there's four shades in here, but you prefer very like simple look that you can wear every single day, then maybe this is worth it. But I feel like there's so many cheaper alternatives. Like ColourPop is a great example that you can probably get the same color story or close to at a much cheaper price and still really good quality. So um, while this is nice to have, uh, I don't recommend it. I'm just gonna go through these other two quads because we're kind of in the same, we're gonna go through all the quads right now. Uh, so the first one I wanna talk about is this one. This is what I call the hot pink quad from the color workshop set that I got. Again, comparing it to Charlotte Tilbury, I got a really pretty look out of this. Took a little bit of effort, like this purple, I really had to work to build it up and I got a lot of fallout. Um, also technique wise, I got a lot of fallout. That was that that was more me than the shadow. Um, but I felt like I got a really, really pretty look out of this. And I do like the, these two colors on the light colors. I feel like are really, really pretty. Um, I'm gonna keep this, but I'm gonna depot these because I feel like as quads themselves, they're not effective. I feel like these would be better shadows mixed with other shadows. Um, Cause in the quad itself, it's not, not really a, a useful story for me. Um, and then the next one, again, is the soft pink. This one, again, I felt like I got a really similar look to the Charlotte Tilbury. Very pink though, like this leans all pink. Um, again, maybe not cohesive as a quad, but if I blend it with like the other quad and I mix that with a couple of browns, like if I can get some single browns into like a palette, you could get a really nice like eyeshadow palette that you could use on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, these take a little bit of work, like you kind of have to just build up the product a lot more than like you would, for example, the Huda ones, like those you touch it and it's pigmented. But like, I still feel like I get a pretty look out of this and it's super cheap. So like, why would I not, like, why would I get rid of it? You know, why would I not keep it? I don't know what I'm saying here, but basically I'm keeping these, <laughs> even though they're like, they seem kind of like cheap, but well, they are cheap. I like them. I like the look I get out of them and I think I would get more use out of them. That's what I'm trying to say too. I think I'd get more use out of them if I take them out of those quads. The other quad I want to talk about is this one. I wore this like three times, but I only took one picture. Um, and I wore it in a couple of videos. I feel like you can get a bit more versatile. This is an example of where you can get a bit more versatility out of a quad compared to the Charlotte Tilbury. Because like if I just pull these two shades, I get a certain look. But if I pull like this shade and this shade, I get a look. Like there's enough variation, I think, like with having this deeper shade. My biggest gripe is these two are too similar. I think this would be a more effective quad if this was a bit brighter, like had a bit more white base to it, um, just to differentiate it a little bit more from this pink. They're still different, but they're not quite, and there's not quite enough tone difference for to for me to really get a good variety. I also think this could be a hair darker um, for this to be a bit more of a useful quad, but overall really enjoy this quad. It's an easy one that I can throw on. My, I would say again, my only downside with this kind of a quad is I don't want to wear this color story every day. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like a coffee quad. That could be like an everyday quad for me. Like a brown, brown eyeshadow for every day is totally easy thing for me to do. Uh, I think I have one photo with this. Um, again, I this is a duo, not really a palette, but I've included it in my palettes this year, but it's going out of the palette category because <laughs> it's really only one shade. And then you've got this like neutral shade that doesn't really do anything. Um, so I'm gonna move this over to like my singles. It's a fine shadow. I'm not gonna get rid of it right now, but I can see myself getting rid of this because, or at least depotting it out of here because it's kind of pointless keeping this little, this little thing. And I can maybe keep this packaging and, you know, put something else in it, but yeah, it's fine. But I'm, I'm not gonna get rid of it, but I'm, I don't love it. And then the final palette that I had was the Shades of Roses palette. I had a hard time using this palette so I only have one picture on my computer right now. So I just like redid my computer. I have a new hard drive in here and I'm pretty sure I had a picture of the second look, but I, it's not there because I think it was like the day difference. I like backed up my computer, then it was a day and then I did the new hard drive. And this was a few files in there that I didn't quite get backed up. Uh, I'm gonna get a like hard drive reader so I can read my old hard drive, but by then it'll be too late. Anyway, 
let's talk about the palette. Um, I felt like this palette, I just was not into wanting to use these colors. Like I just couldn't do it. I tried, I couldn't do it. Um, I think both looks, I went pretty neutral. One look I was focusing again, I kind of did the Huda method, whereas I got, I picked this color first and then worked around that look. And then the other look, I just was kind of going with the neutral. So I went with like these two shades, this shade and this shade. That's the picture I think I can't find. Um, but I really just kind of worked on the neutrals. Didn't touch the glitters at all, like the, or the glitter glitter. Um, and I didn't really touch like the hot pinks or the reds. I do recall that I think those stain as well. I just wasn't into it. I couldn't do it. So I didn't, I didn't force myself to, to wear those shades for this palette. Okay, let's get talking about the final round of picks. So previous months I was rouletting almost all the palettes except for maybe one here or there because it was one that I just bought or one that I definitely wanted to use at a certain point in time. I was doing that mostly in the latter half of the year. Um, all of these are picks because they're their last remaining palettes. There's one in here. I know there's one I skipped. So there's a colorful one that's a color workshop one that I've just decided I'm not using. I also have another palette in here that if I don't get around to using it, I won't care. I know I like the palette. It's just very redundant. And again, you're going to see <laughs> December, November, December. It's like, wow, I really do have a lot of same, same that I maybe should try and figure out what I'm doing with. But anyway, let's talk through these palettes. So let's talk about this one the first, cause it's on the top and I need to move it um, out of the way. Cause it is the biggest palette I have. It's the Too Faced Natural Lust palette. I got this at Winners, like 40% off. It's got 30 shades in it. Um, so I'm not sure how my swatch photo is gonna go for this. Maybe I'll do 15 and 15. Um, I really enjoy this palette. Ironically, it always comes up in like December. Like the last few times, I've, I've had it for two, three years, I think 20, when did I buy this? 2019. And I almost always use this in December for some reason. <laughs> so just kind of funny that it worked out that this ended up being a December palette. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing with this one. I really enjoy this palette. It's going to be difficult though, I feel like, to use this as much as I want to use it with all the other palettes that I need to kind of play with as well. Um, but really looking forward to playing with that. Let's just go sort of brand wise here. Next up is this guy, another Too Faced palette. This is the White Peach palette. I kind of wish this came up earlier in the year because this to me is a very spring palette. Um, smells lovely. It smells like peach candy, like the powder candy, like, you know, those little like powdered sweets. That's what th this smells like. Um, I really enjoy this color story. I find the black always a bit weird in this one. Um, I don't think I ever use like these two shades <laughs> in this palette because cohesively it doesn't seem to work with the rest um but it's pretty much all other than this shade this shade and this shade the rest are mattes um so it'll be an interesting palette to play with uh because it does kind of conflict a little bit with my chocolate bar palette um but i am looking forward to play with this because i i'm pretty sure i like this palette it's getting a little dark let's let's up the lighting a little here maybe it's always been a little dark and i didn't notice <laughs> There, that's a little bit brighter. <laughs> Sorry, this, this time of year gets really difficult to film because like, it's so dark. So next up, we're gonna go with another Too Faced palette. Uh, this guy, he's brand new to me. I haven't even swatched this. So when you see the swatch photo of the colors, that is the first time I have swatched this beautiful palette. This was 50% off and I couldn't say no. I just could not say no. This has been on my like wish list ever since it came out. Everybody that I watch in videos talks about how much they like this palette. And yeah, super, super excited to have this in my life. I almost contemplated like, it's like, okay, this is new to me. This will be motivation for me to get rid of the chocolate bar palette. I don't think I'm there yet, <laughs> but it might be. This might be able to convince me to get rid of the chocolate bar palette um, because it's very much, Again, neutral pinks, it overlaps. All these palettes overlap. And again, last month was very pinky pinky. This month is also very pinky pinky. Uh, speaking of which, here we go. We've got another one. This is the Smashbox Petal Metal Palette. I like this palette. You sort of have two color stories. You have like a more pink color story on the one side. The camera will focus. More of a pinker side on this side, like warmer and then slightly more purpley, but still kind of pink on this side. This is not everyone's favorite kind of color story. I feel like from a quality perspective, this one, um, I know the quality was hit and miss on these. I feel like the quality on this one is really, really good. Um, it's a bit older, but 
checks out. <laughs> the code's a bit old, but checks out. Um, I like this. I like this a lot. I just watched all the Star Wars movies, so some of the quotes are in my head. Um, so yeah, enjoying playing with this one. This one's a bit of an older palette for me. It's from 2018. We're just we're just rolling with the pinks, guys. So this is the City Mini palette from Maybelline. This was like a spontaneous purchase for me. Bought this in 2020. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot. I'm just amazed at how tiny the little pans are. Like if I compare it to, let me put these side by side. I don't know how well it will show. Well, these are kind of tiny pans too. But like, look at these color stories. Like, we're same, 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 same. <laughs> um, the one thing I don't like about the City Mini one is you can see four of the shades look really similar. And when you look at it in person, two of the shades look similar and because two are matte and two, the other two look similar because they have a bit of shimmer. So again, two similar shades. I'm curious to like do some swatching because like I'm looking at like this shade right here and this shade right here look the same. See? See what I'm saying? Yeah, you can totally see what I'm saying. They look very, very similar. Curious to know how similar they are in terms of swatching. Next up, I have a little quad, which actually has a blush in it as well. This is the Multi Cube from the brand I Meme. So this came to me, this was part of, um, I was sent a package from Stylevana. So I ordered stuff from Stylevana and I was also sent a package from Stylevana. I think this was sent to me. <laughs> I don't think I actually specifically ordered this. Um, it's a cute little quad. Very much like a Huda situation though, where it looks like it might be like neutral, like this This looks maybe a bit brown. No, it's pink. It, it definitely shows up pink. Actually, this quad shows up way more peach on me than pink. Like I kind of wish it was pinker and it's more warm pink. Um, and then there's like a little, a little blush down there in the bottom, which is super cute. Um, so I like this, it's a super cute little palette. Kind of always forget that I have this. Um, I got this late last year. So I got this a year ago, November, 2021. And then the last palette that I'm not too like fussed about if I don't use is this guy. It's the e.l.f. Uh, Rose Gold Nude Palette. Very similar to the e.l.f. Rose Water Quad that I just had. Also very similar to the CoverGirl Roses Palette, which I'm pretty sure I did a comparison video of those together. Um, and they're like almost identical. <laughs> I think you get more shades in this, but like if anything, this one's maybe slightly better but they're different. I think that's what I concluded. They were different. Um, so again, pinks, these are maybe more cooler tone pinks than like all of these other palettes. Like these ones are like warmer tone pinks. I mean, you can even see like, where is it? This is definitely a warmer tone pink story and this is a cooler tone pink story, but still pink. So it's going to be very, very pink December, which I like to wear red lipstick in December, so that's going to be a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super excited to like, there's a couple of these palettes, like the Natural Lust palette, the new uh, Natural News palette that I got, um, this little cube, like I'm excited to play with these items. Um, and that's pretty much it. And I've gone through like all of my palettes. I do need to do a review because I do think there's some that I'm going to maybe not declutter, declutter 100%, but dismantle and then declutter. Um, like the, those quads I'm gonna dismantle. The two that I'm thinking of that for sure that I wanna do that to is the Rimmel palettes. They're very one note and they're just not color stories I wear a lot. Like again, one is the spice one, so it's very orangey. And then one, I forget the name of it, uh, but it's like, the, it's like the Naked Cherry palette. So it's very pink, but very red pink. Um, and I just feel like maybe not all of those colors are for me. So that's, that's, that's for a future video. We're going to wrap this up because I feel like I've been talking quite a bit, but I'm really looking forward to playing with these palettes, especially like I've got, I'm so excited for this. Totally went over my palette quota. That's what the other thing too, is I brought in what, six palettes this year or seven, and I was trying to only bring in four. So kind of went overboard. That's part of the reason why I'm going on a no buy for next year, because I just feel like this project has shown me I have way too many eyeshadows that are feasible to use and almost like too many because I like to have variety I do get bored using the same one but I have almost too many that I can't use the ones that I love because I have too many and like that's that's a bad thing you can't utilize the items that you love because you have too many like I mean it's a good problem to have but it's still a problem Anyway, if you like this video, feel free to give a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel here in Toronto, Canada. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.